Anna is 12 years old, a student from the Friends School of Portland. She is the state lead for Maine from U.S. Youth Climate Strikes. When she is not being an activist or doing a pachakacha talk, she reads, draws, and goes birding. This is her story. Welcome, Anna. I have felt a sense of urgency since I was a young child. Often, I'd be anxious about the change happening in our natural world and the animals affected by it. I told myself that all I could do was to go through school and I could do something, anything. I thought that only a scientist or an adult with a PhD could make a difference in any way. Now I know differently. Last year, a climate club was formed at my school. We talked and watched videos. I learned much about plastic pollution, how climate change is a humanitarian crisis, and the many ways climate impacts life on Earth. But I was thirsting to be one of the people in those videos. I hungered for bolder action. One day, a real opportunity appeared. The club was filing a petition to the state's DEP, and before I knew it, my hand was raised. I surprised myself by volunteering to write a poem and read it at the petition send-off. When I read my poem in City Hall, my hands were ice cold and shaking. Little did I know that public speaking would soon become a weekly routine. That experience helped me realize the power of the youth voice and that waiting until I was an adult to speak up wasn't an option. Earlier this year, we built up our climate club to become a yell for climate justice. We learned about Greta Thunberg the Swedish girl who sparked the school strike movement. She sat alone to protest an action against climate change, and that message swept with youth around the world. She declared a global strike for, for climate on March 15th. That announcement led to the U.S. Youth Climate Strikes Organization. When I checked their website, Maine wasn't on their striking map. I reached out to them and asked if we could participate as well. Before I knew it, they asked me to be the state lead for Maine's part in that global movement. I had less than a month to prepare. I worked with 350 Maine and other youth organizers from across the state. Bates was prepping an event in Lewiston, College of Atlantic held a teach-in, and Portland, where I was organizing, was getting ready for a rally, a rally in front of City Hall, where I had read my poem not long before. On March 15th, when I stood on the Portland City Hall steps, greeting students, I was shocked. Throngs of young people were filling the square. A hundred kids from this school, 200 from that one. Newspapers estimated up to a thousand people attended that rally. It was beyond our wildest dreams. A year ago, I could not have imagined what I'm doing today. I simply never thought that a 12-year-old could help mobilize a thousand people, talk in NPR with Jennifer Rooks, meet directly with politicians, help organize events in our capital, work with adult organizers as equals. But so much more needs to be done. In 12 years, the threshold given by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change to put the brakes on carbon emissions I will be 24 years old. How old will you be in 12 years? Your children, your grandchildren. All conceptions of time and permanence are thrown off by the report. Everyone wants to live on a healthy planet. That is why the youth are pushing back against governments denying the climate crisis. It is why I am pushing back. It seems as if I'm going off topic away from my personal story of activism. <coughs> but this is my story. The futures I hope for and the worst case tomorrows are my story. And the story I want is much brighter than the ones predicted. I envision a future where kids like me 
can grow up safely in the state of Maine, my home. They won't fear that their houses and livelihoods will be swept away by the rising tides. They won't worry that invasives will destroy our boreal forests. They won't fret that their children will never experience a snowy Maine winter. I envision a future where tree huggers are our leaders and climate scientists head the EPA. I envision a future where this planet has a future. We will get there if all listen to the children. We must, or all will be lost. No one is too small or unimportant to take action in this reality where time is fast and unforgiving. Some politicians make empty promises to gain office, but where will that office be when the White House is underwater? What do the votes matter when the voters are choking on smog, fighting drought and fire? These questions are being answered as the youth climate movement continues to evolve. The Sunrise Movement that brought the Green New Deal to the national spotlight in six months is planning to bring thousands to presidential candidate town halls, insisting that aspiring 2020 Democrats answer questions on climate change. Extinction Rebellion held massive protests in London that captured the attention of the world. And the landmark Youth vs. Gov court case, also known as Juliana versus the US, found out its fate two days ago. That case is major. 21 youth plaintiffs sued the government for violating our constitutional rights to a healthy earth. We're waiting to hear what happens next. And I'm just trying to keep up. All of it could lead to something beautiful. That is why I don't feel helpless anymore. I am driven by passion for the earth. My worry has declined as my time networking and being an activist has grown. Through finding my voice, I have left behind my fear.